Good day everyone, I'm Aruj, your host for today. And I'm Lauren, and welcome to our garden theme schism show. We asked what you guys were growing in, our, in your yards, and what you intelligent beings know about your plants. Turns out schism students have a whole lot of plants growing in their gardens. Next week's theme will be revealed at the end of the show. Now, let's get right into it. Tomatoes can be used in many recipes, like pizza, pasta, juice, and more. It's no wonder it's such a popular plant to grow. Krista Reed of Earl of March has been keeping track of the growth of her tomato plant, and we can happily report that her plant is very healthy. Krista has also prepared to plant her raspberry and elderberry plants in her garden this year. For those who are first-time raspberry growers, you have to wait all the way until your raspberries are ripe in order to pick them. If you pick them too early, they don't ripen up. So you have to be very patient. And you know what? I really like these photos. All the way from my head, tomatoes. Next up, we have photos from Gabrielle Garcia of her flowers and how to take care of them. This is a daffodil. Gabriel tells us the plant is a perennial that blooms during the springtime. It requires full sun to partial shade and needs to be watered at least once a week. Garden tulips don't require much watering, so water it once while you plant it. Also, tulips require seven hours of sunlight daily, and the preferred season for planting is late fall to early winter. This is the weeping forsythia, also called golden bell. This plant can reach up to three meters in height and requires full sunlight. Pruning is also recommended in order to shape the plant. Finally, this is a hyacinth. This perennial blooms during the spring and summer. This plant is known for giving off a strong scent too. Wow, those are very beautiful and I would love to take photos of those. My puns are not that bad, and who knows, they might just start growing on you. No, I won't say a pun. Please, I believe in you. If you're not going to say one, at least don't kill my vibe. I won't kill your vibe, but perhaps Poison Ivy will. Here's a clip by Xi'an with a gardening safety tip. Good afternoon. I just wanted to provide you with some simple gardening safety tips. Always wear gloves. Why? Because the hands will look like my blister covered hands if you unknowingly touch a plant you should not have. I don't know if you can tell, but the rash has spread to my face because I touched my face after touching the poisonous plant. So if you know you touched something you should not have, wash your hands. I don't know what I touched, but it's probably something similar to poison ivy. What is poison ivy? Poison ivy is an allergenic flower plant in the genus Toxicondendron found in most of eastern North America, including Ontario, Quebec, Atlantic, and Central US. The sap from the plant can cause an itchy, irritating, and sometimes painful rash that can lead to blisters. The sap can spread through surface contact and will bind to skin. Poison ivy can be hard to identify due to how it adapts to its climate and geography. It can latch onto surfaces as a vine or as a shrub. The size and shape of the leaves can vary as well. But what they all have in common is the plant grows in clusters of three leaves, don't have thorns, and that each set of leaflets grow on their own stem. A cautionary rhyme to remember is, leaves of three, let it be. So yeah, wear gloves. That's all for me. Back to the anchors. Thank you, Xi'an. I'll make sure to be careful around poisonous plants. Although it is important to protect oneself, it is also important to protect the backbone of plant fertilization, bees. Bees pollinate a third of the food we eat, and about 80% of flowering plants. CJ Hokey really bee leaves in his garden. In this picture, you can see the leaves and stems growing on the bee balm tree. This plant helps attract bees and other pollinators. In this next picture, you can see a coropsis plant, also known as a thick wheat. In the same bee garden, CJ also has inchiakis planted, and he will be adding an aster once it gets warmer. CJ has multiple gardens in their yard, and all of them have flowers and plants that help the bees. Nasu Kaplan of Earl of March has written us a cautionary story of experience. Them and their mom started transferring the indoor plants outside about a week ago. 
They saw what a beautiful day it was one day and believed spring had finally arrived. So they, plant, so they planted some hibiscus in the front yard. The following day it started to snow and most of its flowers began to shrivel and die. Nazu says that the lesson learned here is to check the forecast of the upcoming weather after your set planting date so you don't make a fatal decision for your plant. Hopefully the hibiscus will get to see another summer. Next up, we have me showing my green thumbs with a garden I've been growing since quarantine. Hey guys, Lauren here. I'm going to show you what I've been growing since quarantine. We're going to start off first with the avocado. I've grown these guys from seed, and I'll show you what they look like later when they sprout. Now we're going to be moving on to the green onions and onions. I simply just keep the little end of the green onion and I place it on water, and it'll continue to grow. Later on, I'll transplant them into actual soil and later into a garden. Now we're going to move on to the basil. I've grown these guys from seed and one third of them have survived and they've turned out pretty well. I'll use them in cooking later. And now onto the little avocado tree. You have to cut it so it turns more into a bush, but we have little nubs where the leaves will be growing later. And onto my oldest plant, the bamboo. I've had it since Chinese New Year and overall it's grown pretty well. Here's the last overlook of the garden. I'd like to thank everyone for watching my video and I'll see you again soon. Well, that's all for today. Tune in on May 22nd for the next Chism Show and the theme will be Emergency Preparedness slash Safety. What have you done or do to stay on top of things? How do you stay safe during certain activities? Is your house prepared for an emergency? What tips and tricks can you share with us? How have you ensured your safety during this pandemic? I think this theme would especially interest the students at Osgood Township High School. Though we love seeing your photos, we also want to see more videos. You can find some video editing software as well as some basic tutorials on our website at lorilive.ca. You can send us your content at this email down below. Now, it's time to make like a tree and leaf. Bye.